Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And just a quick thing, I just realized um, that we have a few of these Valentine's Day cookie boxes left. And um, I'm doing my best to walk by them regularly and not grab them and eat them because they're fabulous. Uh, they include chocolate cherry cookies, chocolate peanut butter, and something else chocolate. But um, uh, anyway, vegan cookies, fabulous. We have a few boxes left. So you can contact our office if you'd like to be one of the people who gets one of those boxes. All right, so today's article, we're going to do something a little bit different today from the standpoint that I did not write this article. In fact, a student of mine, her name is Michelle Palinskar, wrote this article, and I was so impressed with it. Well, she wrote it as a paper uh, for a school project at the Institute, and I was so impressed with it that I wrote to her and asked her if I could use it for a video clip and add it to uh, uh, the um, Health Base Online Library, so that's what I did. By the way, some of you ask me all the time, you know, why don't you put links to the references and the YouTube videos and all that, and if you want all that stuff, become a subscriber to the library, and all of these articles, years and years and years worth of them, posted in there with the references. So, for example, this article has, uh, I think, 16 or 17 references, so if you're interested in all that stuff, you know, you can subscribe to the library. So anyway, this article is by Michelle Palinskar, and it has to do with vitamin D, pregnancy, and childbirth. And um, of course, the reason I'm covering it is, first of all, it's an excellent article that she wrote, but the second thing is this issue of vitamin D uh, keeps coming up all the time. And just a couple of things I want to say about vitamin D before I get into sharing this information with you. Um, there is no end to the number of things for which vitamin D is supposed to be the solution. And the mere fact that the list keeps growing to the place where I mean if you if somebody on the outside looking in would, would think this stuff is like magic dust like you just sprinkle it on something and it solves all the world's problems uh, because it's being prescribed as a remedy for almost anything that could go wrong with the human body and as a preventive tool for almost anything that can go wrong with the human body the problem is evidence just does not bear that out in fact the evidence is so weighted in the direction of this stuff being dangerous and harmful for most people and useless, um, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, let's just start at the beginning. The primary role of vitamin D is to build and maintain healthy bones and to aid in calcium metabolism. The health status of both parents prior to conception is a contributing factor in a baby's health, and the last three months of gestation have an even greater impact on the child's lifetime health status. Now, in order to ensure pro proper vitamin D levels, it's um, best for women to have adequate sun exposure prior to pregnancy and then throughout pregnancy. An article posted in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology states that vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy, or VDD, is a worldwide epidemic, that's how they describe it, with incidents ranging from 18 to 84 percent. In the United States, the range, depending on what study you look at, is anywhere from 5 to 50 percent. From the standpoint of what we see here in this office, uh, many practitioners must think that the deficiency rate is 100% because I don't think we have anybody coming in. We, don't, we never have a day in this office where there aren't at least you know, some people coming in taking vitamin D supplements. In recent years, as a result of all this um, uh, um, fanning the flames of vitamin D, doctors have started routine testing for vitamin D deficiency in healthy patients based on all these studies showing that vitamin D levels are correlated, very important distinction here, with uh, certain disease conditions. So the questions are, is vitamin D uh, deficiency really increasing, or is increased screening just identifying um, fluctuations that are fairly normal in vitamin D levels with the seasons? Um, and as it pertains to pregnancy and breastfeeding, do lower vitamin D levels contribute to worsened health? And does supplement, the supplementation prevent or treat conditions related to pregnancy and fetal infant health, which are correlated with vitamin D levels? Well, let's start with the fact that the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends against routine vitamin D screening, stating that current evidence is insufficient to assess the balance of benefits and harms of screening for vitamin D deficiency in asymptomatic adults. Additionally, there is no consensus on adequate uh, plasma vitamin D levels, that's the amount that comes from sun exposure and fortified foods and supplements. Um, well, despite this recommendation uh, against vitamin D testing, many experts and organizations do still recommend screening for vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy. Um, as a result, supplementation is usually recommended even though there's no consensus on optimal dosage, no agreement on the actual benefit it provides in terms of maternal and fetal endpoints. 
So is it a good idea to take the supplements? Well, not according to the World Health Organization. The agency's position is that vitamin D supplementation is not recommended for pregnant women in order to improve maternal and perinatal outcomes. Now, there are many published studies, including a Cochrane review, on the topic of vitamin D supplementation during pregnancy, many of which have concluded that there's a lack of quality research at this time. A lot of the studies have methodological flaws. Many reviews include only a few small trials. Many are of low quality, potentially biased, and too limited to draw accurate conclusions on the usefulness and safety of taking vitamin D supplements during pregnancy. Several groups have concluded that further research is required and reliable data is needed before making definitive practice recommendations. Well, that hasn't stopped people from, from jumping off the cliff and recommending vitamin D to everybody, including pregnant women. Well, to address the lack of quality information on the topic, um, a medical college in India conducted their own study. And their study included 110 patients who were followed for six months to assess vitamin D levels and um, associated obstetrical complications and risk factors. 48% of the women were determined to be vitamin D deficient. I must insert here that this idea of which markers indicate deficiency no consensus there, but let's just go with what the re researchers reported. The researchers did find an association between vitamin D deficiency and lower birth weight babies, but they found no causal relationship between vitamin D deficiency and adverse maternal and fetal outcomes in terms of preeclampsia, cesarean delivery, oligo, and diabetes. Um, even in the, ten, uh, in the case of the lower birth weight babies, um, no long-term ramifications were evaluated. A study of 461 pregnant women was conducted in Nigeria to determine the effect of low vitamin D levels on pregnancy complications, including cesarean section births and fetal outcomes. After delivery, the participants were divided in groups according to their vitamin D levels, and the researchers concluded that the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency was 29% in the population, but there were no differences between the groups uh, based on their varying vitamin D levels, um, including uh, in, regarding complications of pregnancy, including preeclampsia and the rate of cesarean uh, section birth. In the absence of definitive data, a lot of people take the stance, well, maybe it's not helpful and we don't know that for sure, but certainly it can't hurt. Well, unfortunately, based on a review of published studies and clinical trials, this is not the case. Non-sunlight non sources of vitamin D, particularly in excess of what the body needs, may be harmful. It's also a fair question to ask, what with the widespread con um, uh, um, consumption of foods fortified with vitamin D, multivitamins that include vitamin D, prenatal vitamins that include vitamin D, how in the heck can so many people still be deficient? Well, it's likely due to the fact that all sources of vitamin D are not created equal, and that pills and fortified foods are not a substitute for getting out in the sun. A multi-center, blinded, randomized, controlled trial has been approved to determine the, various, uh, the impact of various doses of vitamin D supplements on vitamin D insufficiency during pregnancy and adverse outcomes in both maternal and, um, and even in neonates. The study is currently recruiting patients and maybe at some point in time we'll get some definitive data on some of these unanswered questions. What we currently do know is the safest and most effective way to ensure healthy vitamin D levels is get out in the sun. You do not get an overdose of vitamin D when you spend time in the sun and very small exposure times, like 15 or 20 minutes um, a few times a week uh, on the skin are the equivalent of taking very large doses of vitamin D in supplement form but without the uh, risk of side effects. In summary, vitamin D is required. We all agree on that in order for a baby to build strong bones and metabolize calcium. Studies have not proven that any health issues are directly linked to vitamin D deficiency at birth, with the exception of perhaps the lower birth weight that I mentioned earlier, although long-term outcomes did not seem to be affected. Taking a vitamin D supplement while pregnant will increase plasma levels for mom and also for the baby, but there's no evidence showing that that leads to better health outcomes for a baby or for mom. Therefore, it's probably best to skip the routine screening, skip the supplements, skip the fortified foods, um, get out in the sun before you get pregnant, during pregnancy, and after giving birth, uh, both mom and baby uh, should spend some time on the sun in the sun. Now, how much the baby gets depends on the strength of the sun and the skin type and that sort of thing, um, but that's the best way to prevent deficiencies. So, 
I'll keep talking about this vitamin D issue. I'm going to keep reporting on studies that show that it is not um, it's not a good idea to test and supplement, etc. Uh, once again, this article was written by Michelle Palinskar. Congratulations, Michelle. We turn out great students at Wallace Forum Institute, so if you're interested in our institute programs, feel free uh, to send me an email and I'll send you some information. All right, that's all for today. In fact, it's all for the week, so pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next week with more news.